this was the first tree. This is like the first kiss right there. That was three years ago. Maybe 12 or 13 years ago, we had somebody spot a beaver in the area. They were here in big numbers in pre-settlement, but um, they're kind of re-crawling their way back into the landscape. The first sign we had of them actually cohabitating the area was about 2013. I'm Marcus Crawford. I live at 865 West Montclair. We own five lots on the Milwaukee River, my wife and I. When we bought this land, there were no trees. We planted every tree here. When they were eating them, I was elated. Then I was, went into a moment of panic. <laughs> I planted every tree here by hand. This is called a hackberry, native to Wisconsin. Ginkgo, not a sequoia, the Dawn Redwood. So it's a lot of work for me to do all this. He's on the beaver trail. Come on, you big baby, get up here, hey. Oh, the fish are spawning now. The raccoon, this is their highway every night up and down the river. Come on, Duncan. Come on, up. My name is Tim Vargo. I'm the manager of research and community science at the Urban Ecology Center. Two hundred years ago, this would have been all forest, uh, and right now it's being managed for different habitat types for education. But uh, about a hundred years ago, uh, there was a dam at North Avenue that created a really nice area for recreation along the Milwaukee River. So it has a historic value. Uh, when when people a uh, hundred years ago, there was a six-day work week, and on Sundays everybody came down here. that concrete you can see that's an old road they were just dumped all of this was just dumped in the river so this is all concrete from the city of Milwaukee they never started recycling concrete until probably just 10 years ago they used to just dump it and a good place to dump it was the Milwaukee River channelizing a river obviously would would have a lot of effects for particularly aquatic mammal species um, and plant species. So you're probably not going to get any type of quality habitat growing in a channelized river. Uh, and if you did, it would be pretty far from the bank. So you're not going to attract any type of beaver. He's only going to be able to eat, you know, a beaver will only go about 50 to 100 feet from the river bank. And some people will complain, well, if the dam comes out, I can see this concrete. Well, no kidding. It's like exposing the landfill. I mean, the, the only thing you should do is just remove it, which is impossible. Because the North Avenue Dam was removed, all of the habitat's been restored, so the beavers come back. Now it's in Glendale. It's been here for quite a while. I had water. I'll show you the lilies in my pond. They disappeared. But here is my first, one of the first strikes of the beaver. This is a Douglas fir. It was about this high. And he, he, he killed it during the night and then he dragged it into the river and I saw the Douglas fir in the river and I thought, why is it in the river? And of course I knew. So I immediately started to fence everything. They're an ecosystem engineer and they bring amazing biodiversity to landscapes when they're allowed to build. So beavers are a keystone species, meaning that their impact on the land is greater than, than what you typically expect because they're doing all of this, um, this landscape-wide changes. So they're cutting down trees, they're moving trees, they're digging huge barrows into the banks. Um, and, and uh, you know, from what I understand, other wildlife tend to benefit from the, the changes that they, that they make. It's actually very difficult to bring species back into a park, especially mammal species without reintroduction. Um, because they're not, they can't travel the great distances that birds could or invertebrates could. Um, so what we've done instead is we've kind of taken, a, a, I guess, a, a from the ground up approach where we're trying to restore 
swaths of habitat by improving it, taking out the invasive species, uh, planting species that are uh, in, more enriching or more important biologically to the habitat. So there are a lot of improvements being done to the habitat which therein also bring different wildlife species when that habitat improves. Every year we have great horned owls here and when we moved in we had a baby, a bunch of screech owls. They're very cute. They came back this year but they didn't stay. We get many, many, many hawks. And I saw a Cooper's hawk the other month in a tree and hanging from the tree, two duck bills that had killed a duck and is eating the duck in the tree. The particular type of beaver that we have here along the Milwaukee River uh, is nothing you should be concerned about coming and making a giant dam next to your property and flooding out your property. Uh, the particular beavers that we have living here are more an urban dwelling uh, type of beaver that like these larger, uh, slower flowing rivers so they don't have to dam up the river. They're, we call them bank beavers, uh, so they actually make burrows in, in the sides of the rivers and um, kind of stay to themselves and leave people alone. And I think a lot of people just, when they hear beaver, they think destruction and they think, oh, my property's gonna get flooded. And really these beavers don't have any need to do that. They have the resources they need without even doing that. Our research team here at the Urban Ecology Center put out some wildlife cameras just to see what was going on. And, and sure enough, we, we saw the, the, the beavers were, were found on camera coming up, cutting down the trees. So they would have attacked all of these. They love the maple. They love the birch. They love the poplar. Any white soft wood, but the dark woods, the hard woods, I felt it's, they're not palatable. It's not tasty. And they're the, uh, the second largest rodent, so they, they, they're massively big eaters. They're always eating. They, they probably taste good. They probably taste like chicken, water chicken. They are particularly fond of that little sweet layer under the bark of especially softer hardwood trees. Um, a lot of first successional trees in uh, ecology are the, the, the types of trees that they really like. Soft willows, um, they're really fond of, especially here on the Milwaukee River, cottonwoods. We're able to have contiguous green space along the river, uh, which means that we're able to restore and preserve a greater, not only amount of habitat, but then the species that live within that habitat. So ecologically, it's really important to not fragment your habitat. And this park in particular, not only is it an important 40 acres of land, but the fact that it can then continue into other green spaces makes it especially important from ecological purposes. It's not our goal to, to not have them come back. That's something we want to celebrate. My name is Karen McKenzie and I'm a wildlife rehabilitator at Fellow Mortals Wildlife Hospital in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Um, there's a lot of beaver trapping goes on in some of the counties that we serve and so it's very difficult to find a release spot for beavers. Uh, so today we released um, a beaver, Chip, um, who had been at the hospital for uh, three years since she was just a few months old and we got to release her back to the wild. Welcome to the 4th of July of Freedom. Now he's going he's gonna to want to hop out, so yeah. you want to maybe... Yeah, it's She's kind of on a sort of tributary to the Milwaukee River, and there's a an island space, so that means there's not it's not easy for predators or even people to get close to her. Um, there's very thick vegetation, but her, her temporary lodge, which is basically just a, a wooden box that sits on the bank, um, has a, um, a long plastic tube that goes down into the, into the river, which gives a sort of temporary safe spot for her.
everyone was very quiet and it felt like kind of a special moment. The beaver uh, was a little timid in, in leaving the uh, control box uh, into the river, but then uh, we were able to watch it for actually quite a time uh, and it seemed pretty special to me. It kind of was like we were communing with this thing as it reacquainted itself with its natural world. And there were half a dozen or so of us watching this, and everyone was just quiet and observing. And uh, hopefully there'll be more of those kinds of experiences for everybody. Uh, the last time we released beavers to the wild was 2012. We had a, a pair of beavers. We've been trying for over a year to, to find a place for Chip to go. Um, it's just very difficult to find somewhere. You, there were people who willing for us to use their properties, but just down the river, there was a place where they trap beavers, and so trying to find them a good, safe place to start. So we feel really good about where she is here, and that we've given her the best possible, possible start we can. And, and now it's up to her, and I hope she, I hope she does well and enjoys her freedom and finds a mate and makes beaver babies. We have a cabin up north on Catfish Lake. This is more tranquil. This is Thoreau. This is Emerson Thoreau, Walden Pond, Crawford's Pond. At, in the spring, we hear all the singing frogs. There's nothing like listening to frogs sing through your window. You don't get this in the city, but this is the city. I'll take the beaver any day and any night. But you always have to have a defensive strategy. If I didn't do anything, I'd lose all of my landscaping, all of the beautiful cedars I planted, and I don't want that. So we live together. We have a contract, <laughs> a beaver tract. <laughs> he slapped, he didn't sign it, he hit it with his tail. Okay.